As Clicky Play, welcome to the video. Today I'm going to be using palette wood to transform this grotty old light into a fancy ceiling light thingy. Hopefully, sometimes my videos don't go that well. My past couple of projects have really gotten away from me and taken way too long, so I want to make a nice simple video like my first coffee table video. I've got the space in my kitchen from when I redid the ceiling about four or five years ago. But I don't really need a light in my kitchen, so I never put one up. But now I need content and I've come up with this really cool idea. So, I'm gonna fit a light. First, I needed some pallet wood and I found this amazing stash that is just down the road from my house. Then I had to split them. My house is tiny, so this is the only space I can split them. Quick bit of denailing, then sorting into usable pieces. Got some sizes from the light, measured the wood, found out there was two different thicknesses, then figured out a way to make the odd sizes work. We're going to use the whole palette, which includes these horrible broken pieces. With these bits held in, I double checked the measurements so I could cut the centerpiece. With the centerpiece cut, I measured up two small bits for the middle and four little bits for the end. One of the great things about this palette wood style is things don't have to be perfect. The, it makes it a little bit more interesting if they're a bit rugged and there's bits here, which is good for me because I'm bad at making things look perfect. On to the next stage, which is fire. Technically, I didn't need to flame every single piece, and you'll find out why when I start assembling it. But when you flame every single piece, you'll find out which ones look better and which ones don't. So I'm going to figure out which ones look the best, where each piece is going, and then we're going to paint them. Not paint them, varnish them, get to the next one. If anyone actually wants to make one of these things, here are the sizes. If you are making one of these, remember when you're fitting it to make room for this fuse thingy. And if you're feeling tricky, you could drill a hole so you can remove it. I know it's going to be a pain if I have to. Screwing the middle section helped keep the long pieces and the framework together so that I could prop it up and start putting the end pieces in the way I wanted them. But I had to experiment with the pieces of wood propping it up so I could get the correct height. Close your eyes. 
I wasn't trying to be fancy on this project and glue it all together because speed was the goal. So when putting these pieces on, I had to make sure I wasn't drilling into the existing screws. Now the frame's in pretty much one piece, I've got to figure out how I'm, I'm going to hang this thing up. I haven't thought about that until now. I used these small eyelet things because I didn't want to split the wood as it went in. Yes, they're kind of rusty, but I don't like spending money. Once this thing's inside the wood, it's going to be very tricky to remove it. So I added an extra length of cable so that when I go to attach it, it makes life a lot easier. Now all I need is some split rings on the eyelets, attached to a bit of chain, and then it will be ready for connecting and installing. This project went exactly how I planned it in my head, which is really rare for my videos. So I've got no real comments on things I struggled with and would have done better in the future. But I like to learn from every project, so if I'm going to be hypercritical, I really need to experiment with more wood finishes. I use that varnish, but I've used that in almost every pallet wood project I've done. I mainly use it because I don't want to go out and buy more stuff. I should have sorted the cable out properly. I left it exposed. I am going to fix that, but I just wanted it up and sorted so I could publish the video. The section where the fuse goes in needs to be improved. I could have just cut a slightly bigger circle so I've got access to it. If that thing goes, I'm gonna have to take it apart. Apart from that, it's awesome. I like it, job's a good one. If you like that design and you do wanna have a go at it, I will list the exact sizes, including thickness, in the comments below. As usual, thanks very much for watching. If you do have any tips, questions, or suggestions, stick them in the comments below, and I will try to get another video done as soon as possible. I've got a few ideas, so we'll see how they turn out. See ya.